Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 20. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with spark timing within the programming in our Ford PCMs. Now we're going to be breaking down what spark timing represents here using a visual representation of an auto cycle and commanding a spark plug to fire so we can see the flame front and the travel and understand exactly what we're trying to work with here in our spark timing tuning. We're going to be taking this a step further and moving into our Excel spreadsheet that provided in the training course and taking a look at some sample calibration tables that we can use to copy and paste back into your existing file to get you a good starting point to essentially create a spark timing base map, whether you're going to be naturally aspirated or force induction. There's going to be a lot to cover in this video, so let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our spark timing tuning within our Ford PCMs. Now the first thing I want to do is open up a calibration file here so we can reference all of the key pertinent tables that we're going to be editing and working with in tuning our spark timing. We're also going to be covering the general idea of what spark timing represents. You may be unfamiliar with that, so we need to cover that as well so you have a background in moving into some of these tables and understanding what we're trying to accomplish. First thing I want to do is actually open up a calibration file so we have that as a reference point for our tutorial. So let's go here to file open and then we're going to move into our HP tuners folder, the course, and then to our calibration file examples. And then we're going to move down here into the stock 2005 Mustang GT 4.6 liter file. Let's click open here. Now from here, we're going to go into engine and then we're going to go from general here into spark and we're going to be focusing our efforts in this video under our advanced tab. There's a lot of different tables here to cover and to talk about. Some of them we don't need to change, and some of them we absolutely need to update and change, so we'll talk about that. We do have some other tabs here under our Spark main tab, retard and knock sensors. This is going to be for our knock control, these two other tabs right here. We're going to cover that in the next video and talk about what that represents and how to go about working with those tables and those programming variables for the knock control and understanding that a bit better. But for right now, we're going to be again focusing right here into the advanced page. And before we go and take a look at these tables and understand how the, the Ford PCM works with the spark timing in its operation of having uh, controlling the engine and making sure everything's running properly, let's first understand the idea of spark timing because this is what we're trying to tune out. Spark timing is going to be what makes the power out of the engine. We have to make sure the fuel is right. The next step after making sure the fuel is right is dealing with our spark timing. And we can literally make or break the engine. So if we don't have enough spark timing, we'll have really low torque and horsepower production out of the engine. If we have too much spark timing, we'll have knock or pre-ignition occur. That's where we have unstable combustion. We have rapid rise in our cylinder pressure, which damages the pistons and rods and the uh, connecting rod bearings. It could break the connecting rods. All kinds of bad things can happen. We want to avoid knock and pre-ignition. So we need to make sure that we're operating at an optimal spark timing level based on what kind of load and engine speed the engine's going to be operating at. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Let's first break down, let's jump into one of our tables here. So let's jump into our borderline knock table. This is going to be our spark timing that we'd want to source from in most all conditions. Now, if we take a look at the table, the table is based on load, which is going to be uh, where the engine's operating at. That's a function of looking at our mass airflow, air mass representation, looking at our speed density calculation. It's going to be that hybrid between the both. And it's going to figure out what the air load is going to be. That's a PID channel that we can log in our VCM scanner. But as our load increases, we'll have more airflow coming into the engine. And we'll find our spark timing will vary. So we can see here, as we go up in load, generally speaking, our spark timing will decrease. We'll have a lower number. In fact, we can see it goes from a positive to a negative number. Now, also, if we take a look here at our table, we're going to find here we have engine speed at the top. We have 500 RPM here. We have 65 here at the top of the table, so 6,500. We're going to find as our engine speed increases, generally speaking, we have a higher amount of spark timing or more advanced value. So when we're speaking and referencing spark timing, the lower the value, the more retarded the spark timing is. The higher the value, the more advanced our spark timing is going to be. Let's conceptualize this a little bit better so we can um, kind of get an idea here visually of what's going on. So coming up on the screen right now, I actually have a nice video that's going to show you what spark timing actually represents within the auto cycle, within taking a look at our combustion event within our engine. Now, this is a generic view of an engine. It's not Ford specific, but it's still going to apply. So if we're taking a look here and it's going to break down the different strokes of the auto cycle here and how the spark timing plays a role. So we're taking a look at the video here. Um, we're going to first start off. We have airflow being ingested into the intake valve. The intake valve opens 
it pulls the air and fuel mixture into the engine. Now, as the piston draws down from top dead center on that intake stroke to the bottom dead center, the valve is going to close. And then we're gonna find the piston's gonna change direction. It's gonna actually start moving upwards. And that's where we're on the compression stroke. So the previous stroke was the intake stroke. Now we're on the compression stroke. Here we have our fuel and air mixture um, that's going to be swirled in that uh, combustion chamber uh, within the cylinder and our piston is starting to travel upwards. That's going to start to generate more pressure, more cylinder pressure so that we can have um, in the next stroke, which is our power or combustion stroke, we're going to be able to have uh, the proper amount of force placed down on the piston to generate the proper horsepower and torque out of our engine. Now on our compression stroke, this is where we want to ignite our spark so that we ignite our fuel and air mixture and that we have this combustion or the explosion occur. Now depending on where we ignite that spark will really change the way the engine's going to run. So if we're referencing and taking a look at our piston traveling upwards here. We're Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.